uh, I will uh, round off with you, uh, Professor Mark Anthony. Of course, uh, the issue here, uh, looking at it from a global level, we see uh, that Africa's voice uh, is still uh, very timid when it comes to global affairs. And we equally highlighted uh, that Africa is not fully engaged in the financial markets or cannot uh, fully implement policies that can even uh, favor the continent in terms of uh, uh, borrowing or maybe uh, uh, taking loans from uh, the uh, the World Bank, uh, the International Monetary Fund, and even private creditors. So uh, what can we say is uh, holistically, uh, can, can we say African nations can do at this particular moment because we already know uh, the, the problem. So what is the way forward? How can Africa position itself in these uh, global financial uh, markets or financial situations that will help the country uh, to maybe uh, uh, solve uh, the, the, the debt crisis and other related uh, crises which are actually hampering the socioeconomic development of nations. Thank you again, uh, Clarice. I don't think we really know the problem of Africa. But I want to give the problem before I give the answer. Absolutely. You see, yeah, a lot of us actually focus on the fruit and not on the root of the problem of Africa. Africa as a country, as a, a, let me use the word as a country or as a nation, was played with far back when the Europeans discovered the import, importance of Africa, they came here looting it and looting it to go build their country. In 1884, they decided to break this nation into minor states, which they call countries, by creating artificial boundaries. This became the major problem of Africa. And they created a situation and a policy that kept Africans divided. As a result of these, they were able to keep looting Africa for their own development against the development of Africa. Where, when they wanted to shift from slavery, they came in with colonialism. When they wanted to shift from colonialism, they came in with their so-called independence, which they were bringing in neo-colonialism. Sure. And as a result of that, Africa has been a farm for Europe. That is why Africa has no voice. Because as a divided people, there is no possibility for you to raise your voice. And so if Africa will get to that place where it can take independent decisions, economic decisions, then we must go back to visit the thoughts of Kwame Nkrumah in 1963, where he asked the African leaders, now that we have struggled to say we are getting independence, we should immediately get into economic independence. You can't use political independence without economic independence and become an independent nation. Absolutely. And so it is very important. We go back to the 1963, revisit the thoughts. We work on it. I don't, that is why I kept on saying that leadership in Africa is one of the greatest problems. And that is the reason why we are where we are. With a division that we have, it is practically difficult for us to, to stand as a voice and talk and the world listens to us. The so-called African Union that has been brought into what, what they call the G20 has no power. Why? Because the chairman of the African Union Commission is not the president of any nation. He has no power except what he is given. And as a result of that, he cannot take any decision for, for Africans. And so we need an African nation to be reconstituted. What we might call united whatsoever, but we need a confederation of nations in Africa so that we can have a single power. With Africa standing as a single power, a single economic power, we will have a very major position to stand with. We will have a voice because our economy will be standing at over three point something billion US dollars. Mm -hmm. Apart from that, the African voice will have, will have a currency which will permit us to be able to trade and take decisions in the world market. Without this economic decision power taking, we do not have anything that we'll say. Let us sit and ask for all the debt reliefs that we want to ask. Let them even relieve all our debts and say we, you are free. We'll sink back into another debt. Why? 
because they are running the game. They are telling us what we need to do. They determine the projects we need to run. Why? We are, di we are divided. We are divided. And so there is need for a united Africa. When we talk of united Africa, it should not be a united Africa for political reasons only. We are talking from, from an economic perspective. Yeah, absolutely. From an economic perspective. An Africa that has its own currency. That is not dependent on European, on Euro, neither on dollar. dollar. We have a currency that we can place on the table and tell them we work based on this. And trade with Europe, trade with China will be determined by our own currency. When the Chinese come here, they don't do business with dollar. They do it with yen. When you want to do dollar uh, trade with, with America, they come with the, with the dollar. How many currencies do we have in Africa? We have, you come here, you have Kwasha, you have New Kwasha, you have, you go to Nigeria, you have Naira, you go to Ghana, you have CDs, you come to Cameroon, France, CFA, you go to, so, so with all the so-called currencies which are practically nothing, you cannot imagine we have all the gold in the world. But a unit of European currency just a unit is about three thousand units of us so how can it be possible that we can do trade that we can talk economic independence if we do not bring all this economy together with the 1.3 billion population that becomes a major market then we can now talk but without this Everything will be seen as proposals for solutions to the debt relief and whatsoever will still bring us into another debt. So Africa needs a united front to Indeed. face the world. In detail, Professor Mark Anthony, Africa a united front uh, in every uh, sphere to be able to, to face the world, which I will reiterate, the world that is going through uh, global transformation and, of course, uh, living from a unipolar to a multipolar system. But then the African continent can only uh, has a or have a voice, I beg your pardon, in uh, these uh, transformation if uh, they are intentional or the leadership or other stakeholders across the Africa. And I think uh, from all all of that uh, uh, the uh, panel of experts have underlined uh, regarding uh, this topic for discussion today, which is looking at how uh, the African or developing nations can actually uh, uh, get out of the debt crisis. It is imperative, like Teniola uh, underlined, for Africa to opt its own uh, uh, diplomacy and, of course, uh, uh, for Africa also to have a voice at the global level uh, and also have policies, economic policies, that will be favorable to the uh, uh, total transformation, socioeconomic transformation of the continent.